So upgrades over the here with an updated version of StarkNet airdrop guide. As usual, all links are going to be in the description. StarkNet is obviously one of the most anticipated airdrops and airdrop may happen way down the road in like middle 2024 or potentially even late 2024. And there's also a possibility that the airdrop will not happen at all like you cannot rule it out obviously but assuming airdrop will happen what would be our strategy in terms of off chain i don't think you can really do anything and if they airdrop most likely this is going to be be based solely on on-chain activities and for on-chain as usual we have several metrics that the majority of teams use these are number of active month weeks can be potentially days but less likely usually it's either weeks or month then potentially a number of transactions and then volume of transactions so these are usually quote unquote standard metrics they can also sometimes be something like the number of smart contracts that you interacted with so these are criteria and obviously we want to spread out transactions in time as much as possible but again be wary of the probability of airdrop happening relatively soon. If you're starting now, if you don't have any prior transactions, I would be aiming for like 20 to 30 transactions at least in the next maybe like three to four weeks. So you can do let's say like seven to 10 transactions uh, per week. If you already done transactions and you just like adjusting the strategy a little bit, I don't think you need to do that much. I would think like three to five transactions weekly should be enough. If you can increase the volume, I would increase the volume or interact with different smart contracts than you previously interacted with to increase that metric. Uh, before we begin discussing actual uh, transactions on the StarkNet itself, if you haven't started hunting for the airdrop at all, but you want to, I would say start as soon as possible, because again, there is a possibility that we're gonna see this airdrop very soon. So if this scenario will play out, you only have very, very limited amount of time to actually get some metrics. Okay, with that out of the way, let's dive into activities on StarkNet. I'm not gonna be showing the transactions themselves because I wanna keep this video short and we'll have this long boring part of like waiting for transactions and clicking the confirmations in the wallet, which is gonna go over bridges, DeFi apps, and NFT marketplaces that we're gonna interact with. First of all, obviously you need to have StarkNet wallet. We have two very popular wallets for that, Argent and Bravos. Both are very good, so it's completely up to you, whatever you want to use. Then to kick off transactions on StarkNet, obviously first we need to use some bridges. Here I will actually uh, do one transaction. So here obviously the process is pretty simple as usual. And I recommend using native bridge at least once. Obviously since it's on Ethereum mainnet, better use it when gas is low on the mainnet. Also, it doesn't have to be your first transaction. So if you're low on funds, but you want to start doing activities, you can use third party bridges. For that, I recommend either Orbiter or Layer Swap. Obviously, you can use other bridges if you have some additional incentives there, or maybe you're hunting for the potential airdrop from these depths themselves. But to summarize bridges, at least one transaction via the native bridge, and in terms of volume, obviously, the more the better, as always. But that's completely up to your budget, because theoretically, you can do activities with like 20 USD. But of course, it will be better if you can use more. Then we got DeFi applications, mostly DEXs. I recommend doing transactions on Jedi Swap, 10K Swap, and Seed Swap. Then we have Avno Trade. Avno is an aggregator. If you want to interact with more contracts, you can use this one as well. And then we do have ZK Land. This is a lending and borrowing protocol. And I recommend doing several transactions here as well. These depths are pretty standard DeFi applications, so you shouldn't have any problems using these. Also, as for DEXs, don't forget liquidity. Because sometimes people, they just do swaps. They just swap ETH to USDC and then swap USDC on ETH on other DEX. 
I would still recommend provide a little bit of liquidity here and there so you have these type of transactions. And also in some cases providing liquidity actually weighs more in terms of getting high allocation potentially but again this is all obviously subjective and speculative. Next we get interaction with the NFTs for that I recommend NFT marketplace unframed. Here we have pretty standard NFT marketplace interactions like buying NFT, bidding on NFT and then listing and selling the NFT. User interface is very clear here as you can see when you open NFT you can see the collection uh, you can buy now, you can make offer, I mean, and the same goes with the listing. Like I have all of these NFTs, for example, I can just click on it and you can list it for sale. Moving on to identities, you can mint your ID and get your .stark domain. This is done on starknet.id app. If you haven't done this previously, after connecting your wallet, I'm going to use in my Bravos as an example here because uh, in Argent, I already have .stark domain. So if you click on get a new identity, it will prompt you to sign a transaction for the mint. And so if we mint this one, okay, it was confirmed. Let's check. Okay, I refresh the page and now you can see this identity. And you can also connect uh, your socials to this NFT and additionally you can also buy the .stark domain but these are pretty expensive. Uh, one year is 0.009 ETH. Uh, here you can mint your new StarkNet ID right there without actually doing the previous step or you can select already minted StarkNet ID and use this one to uh, connect your .stark domain to it. As for necessity, I don't think the .stark domain is necessary. By the way, if you're using Bravos, you can write in the wallet get .bravos.stark domain. Uh, for that, you just go to settings and here you have register.bravos.stark domain. I already got one, that's why it's inactive for me. So that's all I want to cover here regarding the StarkNet airdrop strategy. Be sure to comment down below with your thoughts and your questions uh, regarding this airdrop. Let me know what you think, whether or not they are gonna drop and if yes, then when it's gonna happen. Thank you very much for watching. If you found video helpful, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.